Hello and welcome to today's tips and tricks session on Google Calendar for appointment scheduling. Brief overview of what we'll be covering today. We're going to start things off just giving you an introduction into appointment scheduling, talking about how to use them, and what feature they're replacing. From there, we'll actually show you how to enable appointment schedules in your settings. After enabling appointment schedules, we'll actually run through creating an appointment schedule, talking about all the different settings and specifics that you can set up for yourself to customize that experience. And finally, we will cover the process of what it looks like after someone has actually booked with you as well as booking itself. So with that, let's jump on over into my test account here. If this is the first time you've heard of appointment scheduling, what it is is it's a new feature in Google Calendar, or a relatively new feature, that allows other people to book time with you without having to have you manually create the appointment or the event yourself. Now, there's a deprecated feature, or soon to be deprecated feature, known as appointment slot. So as I scroll and create an, a, an event here, you'll notice on the very far right end here, appointment slots. So you might actually be familiar with this feature, and it might still be showing in your calendar. So let's actually just run you through this. This is the antiquated feature. It's much bulkier. It has a lot less functionality in it. As you can see here, we can set up limited slots, limited limited options. As I, as I create this, then actually going to the booking page itself, it's not very pretty. It's not very user friendly. Um, and again, on the user creation side, when I'm creating these slots in my own personal counter, there isn't a whole lot I can do with it. And that is why Google decided to, the workspace team rather, decided to really overhaul the functionality here in appointment scheduling, which I want to show you now and how to actually get there. There's just so much more that you can do with this feature. So first things first, what we're going to want to do, go to the top right corner of the screen, select settings, and jump on into our settings. And as we're on the left hand tab here, under general, we're going to scroll all the way down to appointment schedules. And what you want to make sure you do is in this appointment schedule section, be sure to check the checkbox where it says create appointment schedules instead of appointment slots. That's all you got to do. As you can see there at the bottom of the screen, it actually auto saved. We're going to jump back out to my calendar. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you do make this change and you already had some appointment slots on your calendar, those old appointment slots will still remain. But moving forward, you will now be creating appointment schedules. So we're going to run through that same first step here. Just do a little quick drag and drop on our calendar. Now, as we go to the far right side, we'll notice it's changed a little bit. It says appointment schedule. So we'll just go demo appointment schedule. So obviously, we want to select the bullet point here, create a new appointment schedule. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. Running through now the first page on our options here, you can tell there's a whole lot more that we can do. First thing first, up top, our first section that says appointment duration. Now you have to at least have your appointment be up to 15 minutes. Unfortunately, you can't do something like a five minute event or a 10 minute event um, in terms of those default options. You also can actually run through a custom time setting here. But for right now, we're just gonna run with 30. Next, we get to our general availability. Now, whether you wanna have the same availability on each day of the week, you can then achieve that by having it where it says repeat availability or sorry repeat weekly here if we actually toggle that drop down and go up to does not repeat we would then just be doing one-off dates here in our appointment schedule but if this is something that you want to have same day of the week maybe friday you know maybe a wednesday let's run with that repeat weekly option we can set our availability and add it accordingly and we can even toggle this bottom drop down to select a specific time zone. It's going to default to whatever region you're in, but if you want to set it for a different time zone, potentially with a client or another teammate that you're working with, you can of course change that. Next, that takes us to our scheduling window. The scheduling window is going to allow you to whether whether you want to make your appointment schedule starting today or if you actually want to have a specific start and end date. So selecting specific start and end date where it says start and end date so we can see Let's say I actually want to have this start next week on the 1st, but I never want to have it end. I can just hit done right there. We'll notice now it's actually jumping me forward to the 1st, that start date that I selected. Beneath our start and end dates, next we've got minimum time. Or excuse me, maximum time. So this is the maximum time in advance that someone's able to book an appointment with you. Perhaps I don't want to have someone be able to book that far out in advance, maybe something more like 30 days. I can then select that option. 
And finally, moving down to minimum time here. This is going to be the minimum time before the appointment starts and someone can actually book with me. Let's say, you know, you don't necessarily want to get a big surprise four hours before a meeting. You want to bump that out to 12 hours so you have plenty of time to prepare. You've got that option available to you here. Now, when we went through our general availability here, we set that to a repeating weekly cycle. However, let's say you have a couple of days coming up on the calendar, perhaps you're out of office, perhaps you have a conflicting meeting and you don't want that regular availability to be an option on that date. All you have to do is go down to adjusted availability here, click on change dates availability. And from there we can see our different options on the, on the calendar and we can actually select a specific date and then mark that as unavailable. That's now removed that option here completely. And then we know the first or any other additional dates I need to add to that availability. I can handle that. Moving on down next to booked appointment settings is our buffer time. So this is going to be if we want to select a certain amount of buffer in between our time slots. Now, ideally, you're going to want to do this so you don't get stacked back to back to back. Potentially, maybe you have a call that runs along. You don't want that to run into your other appointment slot. So probably a good idea to at least have 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Give yourself some time to catch a breather, stretch the legs, maybe refill a coffee, something like that. Beneath buffer time, next we've got maximum bookings per day. Obviously, you probably have other things you need to accomplish on the days that you're opening up your appointment schedule. So you can set a limit on how many bookings someone, users can book with you during these, these days that you're available. Next, we're gonna jump down to calendars checked for availability. If I have multiple calendars, I actually can select those right here to make sure I'm not having any conflicts. I'm not going to be booked with any conflicts. But for right now, we're going to keep those toggled off and just focus on my primary calendar. Our color section, if you want to set a really contrasting color here, just so that that appointment schedule really pops and stands out so I don't forget about it, I know exactly what I'm looking at, I can tweak the color there. We're going to go ahead and hit the next button. And now we actually have a few more things to go over. These are going to more so handle what the person is seeing when they're actually running through the booking process. So where it says booking page, photo, and name, they are going to see the icon for my account here at the very top. If you're using different accounts, that's actually gonna correspond with it with whatever your, your icon and photo setting is for that account. As we move on down here to location and conferencing, now perhaps you wanna actually do this in person. You can spe specify a location. Or if you're just doing things virtually here, you can actually change that setting to Google Meet Video Conference. That'll automatically generate that Google Meet for you. Finally, at the bottom, if you want to include an agenda about the talking points that will be covered in these one-on-ones or just some important information for the people that are booking with you, you can include those notes in the description below. Next, booking form. So by default, booking form, what we're seeing here are going to be the three different fields that these users are gonna to have to fill out to book an appointment with you. Now worth mentioning, you don't have to have a Google account to be able to book on someone's appointment schedule. So if any users out there, or any, any other contacts out there that you have that are trying to book time with you, it's okay if they're not a Google Workspace user or a Google user, they can still use this feature to book time with you even if they're outside of the Google realm. But still with these questions here, we have those three default questions, those fields they're gonna have to fill out. If I wanna add in additional items, I can also add in things. They have some preset options here, like a phone number, or I can do a custom item, like a good callback time. And I can also even opt to make that required. And then the final checkbox you're seeing here, require email verification. And the last field here in our options is gonna be booking confirmations and reminders. Now, this is going to be an additional reminder that someone will get sent to their email prior to the meeting. So you can actually set up more than one reminder here. By default, it's just going out a one day before that booked appointment slot. It's going to send out an email to them letting them know. You can even actually do an additional one. So let's say I also want to go 30 minutes before the meeting just to make sure that they're there. Give them a nice little nudge. Make sure you're not, you're not left stranded with an, an empty Google Meet. So finally, we hit save. So now, as we're here, we can see I actually have this reoccurrence scheduled. As you can recall, I actually, on the that one Wednesday, the first here, I, I made my adjusted availability. That's why we're not seeing that. Now, if we go to the next week, it's showing my full availability here. But as we actually click on the appointment schedule here, 
this top section here, I can actually open the booking page. Or if I want to share this, I can share that feature directly. I can either copy this link here, or I can even embed it in a web page if I wanted to. So let's say we've shared out our appointment schedule. Someone's actually trying to book time with us. This is how they're, that's not what they're going to see. That's the old one. That's appointment slots. What they're actually going to see is this here. So looking at contrasting those two, much, much prettier experience, the old versus the new here, um, and just a lot more functionality as well. Now we can see we have that buffer of 30 minutes between because I actually set these meetings to be 30 minutes long and then that 30 minute buffer. Now, as we go ahead and click on a time slot here, we'll say 2 p.m., 3 p.m. As we go ahead and book that time slot, you'll now notice that actually removed the 3 p.m. time slot and now has now updated the availability of the other appointments that I have open for folks to book with me. Now, if we actually jump out to the counter one more time here and go to the fourth, that is now also reflected. So the, what we were just showing you that screen would be someone that's actually booking with you. Now, jumping back to my calendar as the owner of this appointment schedule, I can then click and see here that someone has actually booked time with me at 3 p.m. Now, clicking into that option, we can also see who booked with me, a good callback time, and I already get all those important details, so I go into my call knowing who's trying to book with me. So as you can see in these demos, a much needed overhaul to the appointments feature here in Google Calendar. So much flexibility and just so user-friendly that it's gonna allow users to really book out that time with you. I hope this was helpful and that you leverage these features. Thanks for coming, take care.